Your Excellencies, Madam Ellen Johnson Sergeant, former President of the Republic of Liberia and Chair of the High Level Panel on Migration. Um, it's a pleasure to see you again and congratulations once more um, for all your leadership. Um, Your Excellency, uh, Ms. Elmira Al Fadi, who is not here today but uh, ably represented by our Ambassador, Ambassador Grandio, um, here in Geneva. Um, I think uh, Bill left us, but it would have been a pleasure to have Bill. And, and when we have women, we know that uh, we're working even harder. So, uh, <laughs> Excellency uh, Laura Thompson. And I must say that Bill has done an amazing job so far. We're in London together, thanking him for all he's done. So, uh, thank you, Laura, for being here with us as well. Um, Ambassador Morton Ashland from Norway, and everybody else who has introduced themselves because I think we have been doing this uh, all morning. I know everybody has traveled from very far. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, again, thanks um, to Her Excellency the President for convening us and for her leadership and enthusiasm uh, on this uh, uh, issue. I'm very delighted to be here, and I'm sorry I came a little bit late, but uh, our plane just landed. We should have come with, with uh, the team that I saw leaving. Um, once again, I would like to congratulate uh, Madam President for the 2017 uh, Mo Ibrahim Prize for her achievement in African leadership and governance. You set an example as, as uh, one for women on the continent, but I think uh, overall uh, for all the youth and for everybody who has great aspirations for this continent, I think uh, what you have done is, is, is an amazing feat. Actually, when we talk about migration, we're talking about governance mm -hmm. and the governance of people. And uh, I must say, I was just looking at uh, uh, what the IOM says about migration, that it's inevitable, necessary, and desirable, but if well governed. So it really is a governance price. And so again, I think it's very fitting that you sit here to cheer these meetings with us. I wish to thank Ambassador Laura Thompson as well, who's graciously hosting us uh, in this meeting. IOM, of course, is a valued co-partner, I would say, because when we say partner, it means you're just coming along. But I think we're together in this one. So... Uh, uh, thank you. We will we will go go it. It's been a difficult task in New York, uh, but I think that uh, together, hopefully, we are making progress both for the global compact, but uh, particularly for what we are here for today, which is the Africa part of it, and to make sure that Africa has its voice in that. Um, I think that uh, one of the reasons, maybe, why the commissioner could not be here today was we had big meetings in Addis both on Saturday and Sunday, and. Uh, as you must have heard, President Kagame was in Addis, President Sasunge, so we're all talking about AU reforms and how we lead the process of the free movement of goods of people and the CFTA. And I think uh, the African Union Commission has been at the forefront of this discussion on migration, both on the economic side, which is where the ECA comes in, but also on the human and peace and security side, which is, I think, even more uh, uh, difficult sometimes and more challenging. Um, so I want to thank... Uh, the African Union for their tireless, but in particular, uh, Commissioner Almira, for really, I think, tirelessly going back and forth on, I think as we talk about it and we discuss it, we, it is happening. It's not as if the issue has waited for us to finish the global compact. There is still people in Niger, there's still people coming back from Libya, there is still discussions to be had with the West on what to do. And I think she's in the middle of all that and really, I think, being a champion of it, uh, and has put a real human face on the issue of migration and why we're working here. Um, and it is because of this that the Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, and Musa Faki decided to sign a framework agreement between the African Union and the UN to see how we could bring these things together and make sure that when we do uh, talk about migration, we are not just talking about the economic part, which we tend to talk about more often because that's a little bit where we stand, but to bring in the peace and security dimensions. And I think working hand in hand with the African Union has allowed us to bring this development and security and security and development and the links that they both bring to bear on the issue of, of migration. So again, I, we want to thank the leadership, both of the African Union, but also of the, uh, the champion of migration in the African Union, which is the Kingdom of Morocco for all the work that they've been doing so far. And of course for Comoros, that has been leading the migration discussions for the African Union in one voice, speaking with one voice in uh, New York. Um, I'm also glad to see that all the panel members, or most of the panel members are here all represented. Um, we are, I think, really getting into the second phase of this discussion. 
um, a lot of the discussions in New York are pretty far advanced in terms of closing up on the, on the migration uh, uh, global compact. But I think that, as High Excellency the President said, while that is happening on the, con uh, uh, on the continent, there has been a lot of work that's been happening recently to lay the groundwork for what we hopefully are calling <coughs> the new economic pan-Africanism on the continent, which is basically saying, you know, if we can ensure that we have the kind of liberation and from the economic front, hopefully, as Your Excellency the President mentioned, we will not have undue or forced migration, people will travel, as the Secretary General says, because they want, they travel with dignity and they know that they will be well received. For that, we have done three or four things on the continent this year. One is to pass the single air transport market, which is basically opening uh, logistics frameworks around the continent, ensuring that you can go from one part of the continent to the other, pushing more open skies. I think for a long time we have seen air transport as a luxury good, but we now are beginning to realize as we trade more with each other that we need to see air transport first and foremost as a logistics tool for trade and by implication for creating jobs on the continent. So there is a lot of work that is happening since January to ensure that not only have we signed the single air transport market, but that it would go into implementation very quickly. <coughs> the second thing that is happening, of course, is the financing of the African <coughs> Union and the contribution of the 0.2% uh, uh, levy of imports on all the countries, which is, again, a decision by the African Union to say that the Africans can now begin to set an agenda, can fund that agenda, and can discuss it in a way that is optimal for Africans and African economic uh, uh, independence. And finally, uh, uh, recently in Kigali, we saw the passage of two very important uh, uh, resolutions or adoptions of the continental free, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, and I think that uh, Madam President has gone uh, uh, spoken at length about the advantages of uh, what the AFCFTA can do. But in addition to that, we also saw the passage of the free movement of goods, of people, sorry. And uh, 23 countries, so we had 44 countries sign the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and 23 signed the free movement of persons. That is what we are here to talk about, is really uh, what is that second part of it? Of course, we have 23, we would have liked to have 44, um, as we had for the AFCFTA, because to trade, as my sister would say, and we were talking about it on the plane, um, to trade you need people to move from one place to the other. So we've now said, you know, we're going to open our skies so you can, move, you can send the goods. We've said we're going to trade the goods, but we need to allow the people to cross the borders and we need to allow them to cross in a safe, <laughs> orderly and regular way. So I think that this is what we are here to do. So this is not only about an agenda that's happening in New York and, and the Global Compact, but it really is. I think part of that economic edifice that the continent is building to ensure that at the end of the day it's to provide jobs. And I think when one looks at the United States, um, almost 45 to 60 percent, depending on how you look at it, of the countries listed on the stock exchange were created by migrants or kids of migrants. So we know that, and um, IOM probably has even better statistics on this than I do, but uh, uh, we all know that migration is part of an economic development strategy that we must secure, we must protect, and we must manage. And I think that that is uh, why we are here today, to say how can we do that? How can we exactly, I think as uh, Her Excellency the President said, sensitize our leaders so that you know, we can ensure that migration is part of the national politics, that it gets into the national agenda, and that there is momentum and this is where, again, uh, uh, as Madam President said, you know, it meets democracy, it meets rights, it meets the issues of participation and the protection of rights, because you do need business people and employment to move back and forth, but we need to do it in an orderly way that does not endanger our democracies. And we know that sometimes, if it's not well managed, can endanger our democracies. And we have examples of countries that where migration has caused issues of democracy and poor governance. We also need better data, of course, and I think that one of the things that we're working at ECA most uh, uh, on is really looking for more data to understand and to explain and to analyze, because we cannot put it into our national dialogue if we do not have the numbers. Otherwise, we end up with sensational numbers that then tend to overwhelm and more often are managed then by a side of the debate that is not constructive. So I think that before we can have constructive debate or dialogue 
at the global or at the regional level, we really do need to have bit better data. And again on this, we're working very closely with IOM, and that's why I keep saying that we are co-partners on this, uh, 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 to make sure that we can uh, have the right kind of data to, 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 to discuss the issue of uh, migration in a way that is sensible and ensures that countries feel that they are protected uh, uh, when they take measures moving towards that. I would like to encourage the panel members uh, as they work with the African Union and we're moving towards the next African Union meetings in July to continue an, a, 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 the sensitization process. I must say that I think since our last meeting in Liberia, there is a lot more uh, a reference and discussion around the work of the high level uh, panel on migration. So clearly your work is paying off. I think uh, countries are becoming more sensitized and for that I must thank you first. For, for the effort, and I must say, I think when I was in Liberia, I mentioned the fact that uh, Madam President had called to say what next. She hasn't stopped calling to say what next. And uh, I hope we are giving you the answers for the what next <laughs> on a regular basis. But, but I think uh, your passion for it ensures that we don't go to bed. We continue to work and to, 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 to work with you. I think our report, by today we were supposed to have a report. The report is coming, hopefully we will have it uh, 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 before we get to, 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 to Mauritania to ensure that we have, uh, as you said, we need substantive analytical work to ensure that we can have this conversation in an orderly and robust and technical way because if we do not have the numbers to have this discussion, we will have it at the emotional level and we will lose the debate. So we must have the numbers uh, um, to have the discussion. At ECA, we are focusing on finalizing the report as our first point of business. Um, like the other regional commissions, we are also continuing to ensure that we continue to co connect the global discussions with the local level discussions to ensure that both of them are synchronized. Apart from our policy think tank uh, work that we are doing, we are also supporting uh, the high level panel. I think uh, now that we are also part, uh, due to my, 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 my adoption into the high level panel, we have a uh, a, a two-stream role now because I am part of the panel, I am also part of the supporting. So we continue to make sure that we will deliver all the uh, material that is needed for the high-level panel to continue to do its, its, uh, uh, its job. I know that uh, Madam uh, Shirley needs to come to Addis to see some of our higher-ups in the African Union and we're working very uh, tirelessly on ensuring that that happens on the 22nd. Uh, of June, I think, or we're working on those dates, okay, I see my colleagues. Um, so we, we, will, we will have those discussions very quickly. Um, also, we are trying to develop a migration program for Africa. We just recently had the Conference of Ministers of Finance of the continent in Addis, shared by the ECA, and there also we put migration on the table because, of course, the key uh, discussions we were having with the Conference of Ministers was about uh, the Continental Free Trade Agreement and how many of <coughs> finance can help. And I must say that we had at the meetings the Governor of the Central Bank of Ireland who gave an amazing comparison of how, first of all, small states benefit from trade, but also how important it is then to allow free movement. And today Ireland is one of the countries that boasts of full employment. I think if many of us remember just a few years ago, Ireland had 25% unemployment. And uh, they said, and today when you think of Ireland, you think of Google, you think of Uber, you think of Facebook, you think of all the, uh, I, talk, I talked about the uh, top 10 uh, uh, Dow Jones index, or the 500, I think they have the top 50 have offices in Ireland because they use Ireland as a springboard for the European Union. And I think this is what we are also trying to do on the continent, is to say that if we can have free movement of people in an order, orderly fashion in a safe way and if they are well governed, then all the states of the continent can actually benefit if they have the right governance policies, if they have the right business environment. Because a priori, Ireland was not the country of choice for investors, but they just put in place all the right policies, but they were small enough, they were part of a bigger <coughs> union, and so the big investors came. But then they also had free movements of people, and if, if we actually think about it today in the discussions around Brexit, the big issue is how do you go from Ireland into the rest of Europe because they want to ensure that they have this protection of free movement of goods and people. And I think that allusion, Madam President and the rest of the panel, really spoke to ministers of finance because they left their thinking to themselves, this is not just about 
movement of, 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 of goods. This is about people. This is about, and we know today, as uh, Madam President, you cited, Africa is growing. We're, we're going to get to hopefully 4% and, and more by 2019, but we need 8, 10, if we really, really want to increase GDP per capita. We also know that our economies are growing much faster in the service sector. And the service sector is about free movement of people, it's about providing services, it's about logistics, it's about tourism, Africans visiting more of each other's countries. And so a lot of that is what we're talking about today and how we govern that. So I'm hoping that as you continue to push on the discussions on migration with our leaders on the continent, we will be able to open and advance this agenda much faster and maybe get a lot more countries to sign the free movements of people along with the CFTA. So once again, thank you for having me as a member of the panel and as ECA. Uh, we will continue to do our best to provide all the data that is needed to advance this discussion. Thank you. And I want to thank my colleagues and uh, I think the team also of Madam President for continuing to come back to us on dates and organization. It has been very effective. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for what you said. I was just going to just add.